okay uh, structural idealization okay so far uh, we have seen we have taken uh, individual sections for example uh, is it section sa channel section t section different sections we have taken for calculating the direct stress due to bending at different locations okay when it is subjected to any loading along x y direction or any bending moments about x or y axis now now for example we have taken an entire wing see those sections z or angle or fitted along the uh, skin okay along the skin we we can call this as a long dual stiffness okay that runs along the span of the wing okay we can call this as a angle section this is spar okay spar i can call this as spar flange spar flange this is spar web front spar rear spar so we have done our analysis on the individual section individual section now when i look at the entire wing when i look at the entire wing this section becomes small this section becomes small only that we are going to see now what we are going to assume when this uh, i mean uh, stiffness becomes very small when we consider the when we consider the entire wing so this you can see here in the wing section shown above the stringes okay we can call this a stiffness or stringes and spar flanges spar flanges have small cross sectional dimensions compared with the entire wing section or the complete section so the variation in stress over the cross section over the cross section of the stringer due to bending of the wing would be small and also difference between the distance of stringer centroid and the adjacent skin from the wing section axis is very 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 small okay it's very very small so it is reasonable to assume that direct stress is constant over the stringer cross sections therefore we replace the stringers and spar flanges by concentrations of area known as booms over which the direct stress is constant and which are located along the midline of the skin as shown in figure as shown in figure here you can see it is shown as a lump sum of area if some for example if z section is located here means what is the total area of that particular z section keep a dot the area that area you have to mention here okay nothing but it is called as a booms okay so in wing and fuselage sections the stringers and spar flanges carry most of the direct stresses while the skin is mainly effective in resisting shear stresses although it carries some of the direct stresses the idealization shown in figure may therefore be taken a stage further by assuming that all direct stresses are carried by the booms while the skin is effective only in shear okay so this is the example okay this is the idealized section we call this as idealized section and this is the actual section okay this is the actual section and this is the idealized section this boom area will be given some section will be given and this boom area will be given different locations and the section the entire section will be subjected to some force px or py or subject to any bending moments mx or my now it is required to calculate the direct stress at that particular booms okay particular booms we will see some problem in this numerical in this okay so now i have taken a section here okay taken a section determine the axial bending stress due to mx is equal to 33 kN meter and moy is equal to minus 8.89 kN meter so this is a section so these are the booms a b c d booms within the bracket values are boom areas okay and these are the skin okay this is the skin okay these are the skin okay now we have to find out the bending stress or direct stress due to bending at the booms a b c d okay so we know the usual formula sigma is that then how to find x bar y bar 
the centroid is very, very important. So x bar, as usual, formula sigma a x by sigma a. Okay. Now let me treat this this as my reference, b as my reference, string b as my reference. Okay. This area, okay, 312.5 into 400 a into x distance plus 250 into 400. Okay. This will not give any x distance, so this will give only zero. So we don't have to consider. So these two stringes multiplied by 400 divided by sum of all the stringent areas. So x bar is 133.33 millimeter from boom B. Okay, so we can locate y y axis. We can locate y y axis. Okay. So we can look at 133.3 means we can look at y y axis something like this, right? Now this is my y y axis. Now y bar, sigma y by sigma sigma y y by sigma y. Again b is my reference area 625 into 300 plus 312.5 into 200 divided by sum of all the areas. So y bar is 148.15 148.15. Five. Okay, 148.15 above B. Okay, so this is my x-axis. So we have got uh, x-axis and y-axis. Now this is the centroid. Okay, this is the centroid. So this is 133.33, and this is 148.15. Now we have located the centroid. So as far as the formula is concerned, we need to find. I X X, I Y Y, I X Y. Okay. So here you can see, um, yes. So here you can see the X axis and Y axis. So I X X is nothing but sigma A Y square. Okay, summation of area into vertical distance square from the X X axis. So this is the stringer. Ea 625 into this distance, 151.85. So this is nothing but 300 minus 148.15 is nothing but 151.85. This area into this distance y square, then this area into this distance square negative. Okay, below x-axis. Then 250 into again minus 148.15 square plus 312 into 200 minus 148.15. So plus value. So first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. This is nothing but y distance from x x axis. So this is i x x. If you just calculate, you get the answer. I y y is the sigma a x square. So area into 133.33 square minus. It is the second quadrant. X value is negative. Again, 500 is in the third quadrant. X value is negative. So x values are from y y axis. Y values from uh, x x axis with respect to the quadrant. I uh, have to Choose the positive or negative sign. Okay, so you get this i y y. Then i x y sigma y x y area into uh, x distance. That is area into this is the x distance. This is y distance. Plus this area into x distance y distance. Plus this area into x distance y distance. Plus this area into x distance y distance. Okay, understand? So corresponding, you should take the quadrant. For example. I want this distance x distance means it is a second quadrant x distance is minus 133.33. Okay, y distance will be 300 minus 148.15. Y is positive. Come over here b x is minus 133.33. It is the second quadrant. Okay, again y value is again negative minus 148.15. So you can see here. So when you just simplify it, you will get i x y to be minus 8.33 to 10 power 6 mm power 4. Now substitute i x x, i y y, i x y, i m x, m y value also given in the problem. It is given in kilo newton meter. Convert to newton millimeter. Substitute in the sigma z expression. You got you got this expression. Sigma z is equal to minus 0.0038 x plus 1.039 y. Understand? Now, how to find the stresses in the booms? Now you have sigma z expression in terms of x and y. You know the coordinates a, for example. A. In the, if you look at the i x y expression, you can get the coordinates. This is x coordinate. This is y coordinate. 
So x coordinate, y coordinate, x coordinate, y coordinate. See the same value is written in the table column. See, you can easily get it from the x y. You don't have to search or calculate again it from the figure. Okay. So enter x y value here. Substitute this x and y value here in the expression. You will get the sigma z stress value in the respective booms. So plus means tensile in nature, minus means compressive in nature. So here, uh, yeah, an, an asymmetrical channel section kind of uh, booms A, B, C, D. So in the bracket, the areas are given. Okay, so M X M Y is given. The stringers are made up of different materials. You see here, the stringers are made up of different materials. Earlier, uh, there was no any information about X modulus, so it is assumed that material is constant. Material is constant. So here in this problem, uh, they have given the X modulus, that is A is made up of steel, B is made up of stainless steel. C is made up of magnesium alloy, D is made of aluminum alloy, like that. What we have to do now when it is given different materials means, but all the boom areas are same, right? 62.5, 62.5, 62.5, 62.5 mm square. So now just you find the ratio of a stiffness, stiffness ratio you find out. Okay, that is you should convert the booms, all the booms into one material or equivalent material, how to do that. So let me choose any one material. Let me choose magnesium alloy, okay, magnesium alloy. Okay, so that all the booms will be converted to a magnesium material, okay. Now, for example, this is some uh, 2 into 10 power 5. Since I have taken magnesium, so 2 into 10 power 5 divided by this value, magnesium X modulus, enter here. Then this X modulus, stainless steel X modulus divided by magnesium X modulus, enter here. If this is divided by the same number, you will get one. And this aluminum alloy x modulus divided by magnesium alloy x modulus, you will get this. Now, modified area. Okay, see so 62.5 mm square is the actual area. Now, modified area is 4.462 into the respective boom area, into 62.5. That will be the modified area, which we'll be taking for uh, calculating sigma z. Okay, then 4.306 into 62.5, 1 into 62.5, 1.615 into 62.5. Whatever stiffness ratio value you get, that should be multiplied with the respective stringers. That we call it as a modified area. Now this is 278, 269, 62.5, 100. So sorry to disturb, can you explain modified area again, sir? So modified area, you know, you know how to calculate the stiffness ratios. You choose any one. I can choose steel also. Your base, I can choose stainless steel also. So I have taken magnesium alloy. So this X modulus magnesium alloy should be divided with the, uh, I mean, uh, stainless steel steel aluminum alloy X modulus. That is steel X modulus divided by magnesium alloy X modulus. We'll get one value 4.462. Then uh, stainless steel X modulus. 1.93 to 10 power 5 divided by 44816. I'll get 4.306. Magnesium alloy, if you divide by the same number, you'll get 1. Then aluminum alloy, 72395 divided by 44816, you'll get 1.615. You've got stiffness ratios for A, B, C, D. These stiffness ratios must be multiplied with the original area what is given in the problem. That is 4.462 for stringer A. I got stiffness ratio 4.462 multiplied by Stringer A original area 62.5, you will get 278.875 as the modified area. Like that, you have to repeat the process for B, C, and D. Now, X bar, sigma A, X divided by sigma A. Let me choose C as my reference 269.125 into 150 plus 100.938 into uh, 100 divided by sum of all the areas, you will get X bar. Y bar is sigma A, Y by sigma A. Again, C as my reference. So this area into 250 plus this area into 250 divided by sum of all the areas, you'll get 192.56 millimeter Y bar. So right side of uh, stringer C is X bar 70.93, which gives you location of the Y, Y axis and Y bar 192.56 above the stringer C, which gives the location of the X axis. So the intersection of these two axes, nothing but the centroid. 
now we have to find ixx ixx is equal to sigma a y square same procedure some 278.875 into y square so this is the y distance 250 minus 192.56 similarly 269 i'll get the same distance which we got first in jda because of the same level or same height with respect to xx axis they have located c stringer c 192.56 below x axis to so negative and this area 100 into minus 192.56 again it's a negative square so if you just sum it up we'll get this 7.868 and 10 power 6 mm power 4 <coughs> iyy is equal to sigma a x square so this is the area x distance 70.93 it is in the second quadrant negative then 269.125 so 150 minus 70.93, you'll get 79.07 x value positive. It is in the first quadrant. 62.95 x and y both are negative because it is a third quadrant. And the d value 100.938 into 29.07. It is in the fourth quadrant. X is positive. 100 minus 70.93. If you sum it up, you will get 3.485 into 10 power 6 mm power 4. So i x x i x y sigma a x y. So area x value is available from iyy and y value is available from ixx okay so if you just substitute all the values you will get ixy you will get ixy ixy is nothing but 0 0.375 into 10 power 6 mm power 4 so we have got ixx iyy ixy okay so mx my value also given in the problem just you can substitute you can get sigma z expression okay sigma z is coming out to be 0 0.178 x minus 0 0.152 y so 0 0.152 y so boom uh, area a location you have got the coordinate you can get this coordinate easily as i told you already now x y so boom a x y boom b x y boom c x y boom d x y so enter the corresponding coordinates in this calculate the sigma z substitute x and y in the above expression get sigma z get sigma z okay if you substitute this in this equation you will get sigma z sigma z is a stress multiplied by the modified area you will get the load in the respective stringers if this load is divided by the original area, that is 62.5, you will get the true stress you know, in the respective stringers. Okay, so we can check the answers also. You see here the loads, uh, it is given like plus and minus, that is the compression and tension, something like that. Okay, you sum up uh, the loads. If you just sum it up all the loads acting on here, uh, summation of speed total stringer loads, you can see it should it's should coming out come out to be zero or if you take a moment about the y axis and the x axis by taking this load into account you will get that is that would be equal to the mx and my which is given as a problem mx and my okay so that is this is the force given as a problem means that is stringer a is having the force okay mx means so this load multiplied by the perpendicular distance suppose the load is acting multiply by perpendicular distance load is acting here multiply by perpendicular distance load acting here multiplied by perpendicular distance load here multiplied by the perpendicular distance if you sum up i should get mx to be this value and my the load acting here uh, multiplied by this distance load multiplied by this distance load multiplied by distance load multiplied by distance you will get my which is equal to the external bending moment applied so that's that's how i check i have checked here you can check it okay at later so which means that our answers are correct which means our answers are correct okay